right, hello, welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging and Friends. We are back to playing Alien tonight. We're continuing our Cinders of Heaven campaign. And uh, we got a full crew. Adam's very excited. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excitement is in my face. As you can hear. If you're, if you're listening, <laughs> not, you're not going to get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told you, you had to bring some energy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, my goodness. Uh, all right. So this is, this is episode two. Of, uh, of the new uh, new chapter. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll dive back in. Um, we're going to do traditional intros. We're also going to explore rivals and, uh, and, and buddies uh, as we get started. Because, um, because now that you kind of got to know your characters a little bit, maybe you kind of know who you hate, who you don't, that kind of stuff. Uh, so we will start uh, with Chuck, because Chuck, you're on That's the overlay right. next to me. So we're starting with yeah. you. First, who are you, right? And then I'm Scooter. Who, yeah, and then who are your friends and rivals and stuff? Oh, it's easy. I'm Scooter. I, I'm the roughneck of the group. I fix things. Uh, my rival is my brother Skeeter, and my friend is my brother Skeeter. So uh, I love that guy, but also fuck that guy. So yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that's uh, that's those are excellent points. Uh, Skeeter, your response. Uh, who are you? Who is your buddy? Who is your friend? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm Skeeter. I'm the one's got that beautiful ass mustache, some bitch. And uh, I'm the professional here. I'm the wildcatter. And uh, I love my brother. He's my heart and soul. But he's also the ignorant piece of trash that goes chasing space turtles and nearly gets us killed. So there it is. He's also your rival. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a. Uh... It's a fixed loop, so no one else gets in, gets to in, you know introduce themselves. No. Uh, so <laughs> Y'all can just leave now. We got this. Yep. <laughs> oh goodness! Oh Adam's no, gone. Adam, we didn't really mean All right. it. All right, Melissa, tell us who the hell are you playing, and who is your buddy? Who is your rival? So I am playing uh, Michelle O'Gwen. Uh, she is the medic around here. Um, someone in chat, and I don't remember who, uh, said that her tagline should be "Let's get physicals." So that is now my uh, tagline. That's fantastic. <laughs> Whoever came up with that? That's great. Great work, right there. Great work. Claim it in chat because I wrote it down, but I forgot to uh, write down who uh, who that belongs to. So uh, for buddy and rival, so far, based on just one session. Um, clearly, um, Mr. Girl is the one as the company agent whose ass needs to be kissed if, uh, Michelle wants to kind of move up the ranks of things. So that's as close as it comes to a buddy, I suppose. Um, but, um, as I was trying to remember the details from last time, uh, Jeremy reminded me that Mr. Girl remembered Skeeter's name. So guess who's Michelle's rival now? Skeeter. Okay. Skeeter. All right, Jeremy, your response. Who are you playing? Uh, and who is your buddy? <laughs> hey, man, I'm Skeeter. And uh, that's my brother, Scooter. I love him. I hate him. Mm -hmm. Wait, what was your name again? Miss Hairband? The the Sweatband? Miss Sweatband. Yeah, yes. Um, no, nah, I'm just kidding, Michelle. Me. I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. We need to get you mm -hmm. like a headband mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think you're, you're, you just say you're, you say your buddy was Krish. Is that, is that right? Did I get that right? Uh, no. So my buddy is Mr. Girl oh, because. Mr. All right, Mr. Girl, 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 God damn it. Jack. All right, Jack. Uh, <laughs> who are you playing? Who's your buddy? Who's your row? Oh, uh, yes, Jack. That's what my mother calls me. But, uh, um, name's Mr. Girl. And, um, uh, I've been sent here to, uh, help alleviate some concerns with the company, but, uh, um, I'm sure everything is right as rain, so we'll be good. Um, so far, I have have yet to really get to know anyone. I do recall having met Krishna before, but, uh, you know, I don't know her very well. Um, so uh, she has a bit of a, uh, a way of pulling one's leg that uh, would, would put her in rival status. Um, but other than that, I don't really know very many people to, to consider anyone a buddy yet. Um, the jury is still out on that one. 
I'll tell you, sounds like you're going to have a lot of buddies there, Jack. A lot of buddies. And oh, then I am, I am a friendly person. <laughs> and then finally, my Trey, tell us, tell us about who you're playing, buddies, rivals, all that fun stuff. I am playing Krisha Khan, uh, Krish for short. She's your colonial marshal who really only got here because she kind of failed upwards. <laughs> and she really should, she has no business doing this job. But but uh, that doesn't stop her from hating the fuck out of Jackie boy girl. <laughs> because I mean, just listen to him. Just listen to him. Of course. Like, how can you not you mean? just have this visceral reaction every, every time? I hear it. And, I hear it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for voice? my buddy, I was saying this before streaming. I really, I think it's more of a project than a buddy, really. But like, I want to work with Michelle to just get her to lighten up just a mm-hmm. little bit. And maybe it's just making a headband a little bit looser. But it may, it could just be something as simple as that. <laughs> but, but either way, <laughs> Michelle is <Excellent>. her buddy. <laughs> Excellent. I like that project. That's a good idea. We should add projects to this. I can fix her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get started. Uh, last time around, first session, day one for the colony of New Joy, a colony that is uh, that is basically tri-chaired by three separate uh, interests, Seekson, who all of you are affiliated with, GES, uh, which is uh, kind of a mining conglomerate, and the IS, uh, I, ICSC, excuse me. And uh, you all uh, are part, again, you're all affiliated specifically with the Sikhs inside of things, but it is kind of this multi, multi-corp, multi, and multi-sponsored colony. And we are on a icy moon in a binary star system, very remote. Um, now, day one began with some problems. A lot of it was the result of working Joes that were sent ahead to get uh, the colony ready for human arrival because this is what's called a sloppy joe uh colony and that you send working joes up ahead they do the stuff and then the humans arrive shortly thereafter and usually bitch and moan about the quality of the construction and that's exactly what happened yeah shoddy construction misplaced equipment disorganized materials all those types of things plenty of complaints but the biggest problem uh that new joy faced was a shuttle carrying one of the final compliments of colonists uh from uh from their ship up in orbit lost control of the atmosphere and crashed several miles away from the actual colony itself. Arthur York, who is the top season administrator for the colony, tasked, for some reason, Pete Skeeter Carter uh, with organizing a salvage and or rescue team, uh, which included Scooter, uh, as we know, uh, Pete's brother, uh, medic Michelle O'Gwin, and Marshall uh, Chris Kant. Now, outside of the protections of the colony, you all ran into some dangerous local fauna, including a very large um, space turtle that was camouflaged as a hill. Uh, eventually, I think you sort of blew one off course with uh, with some mining charges and such. Later, near a bridge, you found a trio of working Joes that were inexplicably standing in the water, in this icy water, almost up to their waist, and they were just staring up at the sky. Eventually, they complied with your commands. They joined your salvage team. You found the crash site. Uh, you quickly realized there were some survivors, including, well, Jack Geralt right over here, uh, seeks an admin and one of the higher ups uh, within the within the colony. Uh, Scooter, I think you were the one who cut through some walls of the shuttle. Michelle, you found or at least you uh, you treated two other survivors that were in this rover that Pete was able to grab and, uh, and sort of drive out. But then your trio of working Joes disappeared and they were found at the base of a tree. Uh, they were staring up at a synthetic entertainment unit that was missing most of his extremities, but still trying to perform and tell good jokes. I just really appreciate the commitment. Uh, fortunately, you rescued that synth named Riku, by the way. Uh, and uh, with that synth in tow, you all returned to New Joy. Later that night, uh, later that night, we had a bit of a problem as um, the nights and day cycle. Uh, on New Joy, very lengthy. So lengthy, like literally several days in the dark, several days in the light. And so later, as Skeeter was headed to the bathing facilities that attached to his living pod, 
you discovered a body in one of the shower stalls, uh, sprawled naked on the floor with a very large hole in its chest. And that is exactly where we're going to pick up Skeeter first. Uh, go ahead and take a point of stress uh, for that. And then, All right, uh, yeah. And Ain't the first man, dead man I've seen in shower. I've done time. <laughs> That's fair. It's, it's it's the stress is more for the flashbacks you're getting from oh from oh god years yeah I remember uh, time somebody got killed with a soup can <laughs> it wasn't too different from this so uh, it's on you man what do you want to do with this oh shit well fortunately I do have a built in communication device I'm gonna give a call over Mister York I think mm hmm okay um, you'll. You'll get his offices, we'll say, and you'll and you and you'll heal like a, like an administrative assistant. This is the offices of Arthur York. May I help you? Oh, hey, um, this is uh, Pete Carter calling, Mister York. Um, since he's not available, I'll be calling Mister Girl to deal with a um, uh, 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 special situation, and uh, he will be appraised shortly. I appreciate you calling and telling me that you're going to call somebody else. That is uh, an efficient use of both of our times. Uh, I thought he'd be there, but you have a wonderful day. It is roughly 1 a.m. in the morning. Why would you presume that he would be? Um, because I'm an asshole. At last, we find common ground. And then click the yep. communication ends. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do now? I call Mr. Girl. This seems like one of those situations that you don't like to make a big hullabaloo. Okay. Uh, girl, you get a uh, call from uh, from Pete's Eater Carter. Was uh, I so in too. a room and asleep? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I will wake up. We'll say we'll say you're in a living pod. So so basically, think of it like these modular containers. And um, for the sake of ease, we'll probably put all of you either in the same one or, you know, adjacent ones or something. Right. Uh, and yes, so you're not that the far away. Back home. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, hello, Mr. Geralt. Hey there, Mr. Geralt. Um, man, two things you need to know about me. I told you before I'd done time, but I never killed nobody. So there's this here body I found in the showers. I did not kill it. Now, I ain't going to take the blame for it neither, but I'm also willing to help settle the problem. Seems like this has been a long day sort of thing that regular folk don't need to know about nobody, and I figured that might freak people out, so maybe I'll talk, talk to one of you suit folks about what you want to do about it, because I'm the sort of guy who wants to do the company line sort of thing, but, like, dispose of dead bodies ain't exactly my fucking wheelhouse. Yes, yes. Thank you for elaborating so much. Yeah. Um, hold tight. Watch the door. Make, no, make sure no one comes in. Dad, I'll be there soon. It's, uh, it's right at that which, point, by the way, that you hear the door to the bathing facility actually open up and you just hear someone kind of whistling, just whistling some random tune. Oh, mm, don't come in here. I couldn't hold it. I What's couldn't that? hold it. Don't come in. I'm Good sorry. Why? Mm. Oh, it's it's going to come out both ends. You better just go. I understand Just go. what he means. Get it. Come, what? It, oh, God. Uh, go ahead. I don't know if it's worse coming or going. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> give me like a command roll or something or a manipulation. Either one of those. Okay. Is fine. I think manipulates. Yeah. Manipulates what I've got. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Because shockingly, uh, I took manipulation. Okay. All of one. That's okay. I don't want to push it. I like the idea that you just barely. Uh. <laughs> so you, uh, yeah, you, you'll hear like, you're like, oh man, come on. It's like the first day you're already breaking. Oh, God dang, man. And then you just hear, I'm going to go find another one. And then the door opens up. Sorry. And close again. Yeah. Uh, let's come back to Jack. Jack, what were you up to? What were you going to do with it? Uh, we are all in kind of the same living yeah, you're facility. Enough. All right, yeah. so I'm going to um, knock on Krisha's uh, door or pod or whatever it is. Okay, so uh, Krish, when the the when you hear the 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 knock on the door, is Chris just sleeping? And what does like her pod look like as uh, as we like zoom in and see you? 
Uh, she's kind of uh, sprawled as big of a starfish as she can be, and she's on her back and uh, snoring very loudly and having a fight, and there's definitely some drool. <laughs> And then you hear uh, a boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom on your, on your door and wakes you up a little bit. My, my shift doesn't start for another four or five hours. And can we talk through this door easily? Sure. <laughs> Why not? It's cheap. I understand, I understand, but your services are needed. Would you be so kind as to accompany me? It kind of turns over and opens the bar and sees girl there. Ah, and thank you, Krishna. <laughs> Do I get overtime for this? Of course. Right. It would be against company give me, policy. Give me like ten minutes. <laughs> and Your time sleep. starts now. You'll get that ten minutes too. How generous of you! Can you fuck off and give me some privacy to get dressed? Of course. <laughs> and he like. <laughs> He, he looks very bewildered and walks away. Okay. Uh, we'll check in with Scooter. Scooter, you probably have uh, joining or adjacent pods with your brother. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he went to the bathroom a fairly long time ago, and he hasn't returned. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's, been a little, it's been a little bit. Uh, does that alarm you, Scooter, or do you not care? No, I know exactly what's happened. He does it all the goddamn time. He He's not one of those people to think that probably the person that went in before them used the last of the TP and didn't bring any more in. So he's just <laughs> sitting on the jaw and just panicking about what he's going to do, trying to decide, is it his shirt or his socks that he's going to sacrifice tonight? <laughs> um, so... I do need to, you know, I do need to keep plenty of blackmail material around. So I'll probably pull out some of his toilet paper supply that I've been squirreling away. Like, he's going to owe me after this. Okay. And I'll, I'll head on over. He's been gone long enough. And so... Let the fear Ske get in, but not the full desperation. Okay. So, Skeeter, you hear the door open again. This time. I'm um, done told you both ends. Go away. That's you, Scooter. Good God, man. What the hell are you eating in there? It smells like somebody died. Scooter, is that you? Yes. Come in here. You got to see this. <laughs> Shit. All right. <laughs> if it ain't breaking water, I'm going to be disappointed. So you head down to the stall. And you look inside the shower stall, and there is a there is a man, butt naked, with a with a big old hole in his chest, clearly dead. Uh, and you can tell that the blood that's here and there is very is still fairly wet. Does looks like this is this happened not too long ago, uh, and he is right there. And I need you to oh. also take a point of stress. You shit so hard you killed the guy. <laughs> I didn't shit to his fucking chest, Scooter. Come on. I I don't believe that. You need to go talk to Michelle in the morning and get some fiber or something, man. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of that, Michelle is the medic, right? Uh, she's one of them, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I would have people. Yeah. I would have moved on to Michelle next. Okay. I would not have checked Scooter or Skeeter's pod. Well, I, I would not safe. have checked Scooter's pod, but yeah. That's probably safe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and same thing, Michelle, you get a knock on knock on your door. Etc. What does it look like inside Michelle's little tiny pod? So Michelle, I would say, is um, like it's one of those places that it looks messy, but there's like organization to it. So like it's definitely not like you kind of walk in and you're like, oh, there's a lot of stuff here already like didn't we just get here <laughs> but she's clearly like got stuff out unloaded it's piled up um what you would see on kind of a, a flat surface near the bed kind of whatever that looks like is that she clearly has some type of like sleep aid that she has brought with her 
Um, so she is heavily <laughs> sleeping because she recognizes that there's really long like day night cycles here. And so like getting proper sleep is important. And so, you know, you'll kind of see one of those like blister packs where something's clearly been like po poked mm -hmm. out and then the rest of it's just kind of sitting there. So uh, one light knock on the door is not going to do it. Maybe you hear you, through the door like a. Is there any is. sort of like button to sure. like signal? Yeah, yeah. I, I try that instead. See if that wakes her up. Yeah, so the light will come on, and they'll they'll just be like a really loud like inside your pod just to wake you up. And so Michelle, your as your eyes open up, super groggy from your uh, medically induced coma. Uh, the lights are flashing. There is the sound of a buzz, uh, like a like an old fashioned doorbell buzz, like really obnoxious. And it happens like two mm -hmm. or three times, and you realize someone's outside your door. What? What? I'm sleeping. What? I understand, and I apologize for disturbing your rest. But uh, your Mr. Girls are needed. Yes, Mr. Girls. Yes. Well, right, right away. Uh, of course. Uh, give me uh, ninety seconds. I will be ready. Much appreciate Way faster than Krish. Krish needed to Who is out. sauntering <laughs> up at this point? Hey, <laughs> Jackie boy, what are we doing? <laughs> yes. Um, this is something that requires discretion. But uh, we believe that there might have been some foul play. Oh, oh, dear. And then Michelle suddenly like... <gasps> oh, I didn't realize you were ready so soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, of, of of course. Why, this is not the place to meander and um, primp and whatnot, right? You're faster than me. She's getting overtime too, right? I'm sorry? She's getting overtime too, right? Of course. It's company policy. Yeah. All right, so... Are you ready yet? By the time three of you... Go over to the bathing facility, Scooter and Skeeter. Are you guys doing anything? And like, when when then the door opens up and they come in, what are the two of you doing? Look, I don't doing? care how much you want to accuse me of this. I'm not going to drop trial and let you compare orifice to wound ratio. All right, <laughs> that ain't happening. I'm, I'm sorry. Just... Did I hear wound ratio? What wound? Yeah. And then she closes the door behind her. Wound. Nobody wants ratio? to see any of your orifices, Skeeter. <laughs> I Skater. know, that's what I'm saying. Thank you, Rish. I Skater appreciate that. Skater shat so hard, he killed that guy. <laughs> you know, that's right. not medically possible. Well, but Scooter. thank Scooter. you, Michelle. Was like Scooter, I think we need to focus right about now. But I would like I, to get out of your way and let later. some professionals deal with this. Later, if you would like you me to did, draw some did, did you up. Did you actually yeah. defecate near the no, body. God, no. <laughs> no, I was trying to keep people out of here, so I was like, oh, God, you know, it's so bad. Did a uh, terrible job. I just walked right in like it was nothing. And all of I was way, hoping whoever did that would get the, you, too. The then we could catch the murderer in the act. Chris is actually going <laughs> to walk to it and bed down and see if she recognizes at, at anything. Yeah, that's my assumption that it's murder, because usually holes don't just show up in somebody's chest. Krish, uh, no. give, give me an observation no. test if you want to, uh, if you want to do any sort of basic, basic assessment. Uh, and yeah, and anyone else can do something too if you're looking to. I would like to do a would would medical aid work as a what happened to this body kind of role. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm fine with that. And by the way, anyone else might have noticed that. Um, Skeeter's oh, little story about like how to not get people to come in. Um, Michelle did sort of actually get a look on her face, like that was a, a good quality cover story. Um, but you would not see that face, Skeeter. <laughs> she wouldn't <laughs> let you know that that was a really good idea. But she understands how people don't like bodily functions. Okay. What did so I? It looks like what? It looks like you, Serious. Uh, you're, you're panicking a bit, Michelle, uh, as, uh, as you freeze, as you lean down um, and you take a look at this body 
and there is a giant hole in the middle of its chest. There is kind of blood everywhere as this was a shower stall and there was water and like you can see that it's still kind of wet in here. Um, but something about just looking at this thing and seeing this big old hole in the chest, seeing his, his face, his eyes kind of going two different directions, his tongue lolled out. Uh, you can see like his muscles are in this like intense state of like pain, like like in shock. Uh, you too uh, start to feel a little bit of that. And how does it look when Michelle starts to have this like freezing uh, moment? So she was sort of talkative about like, well, no, of course you can't like defecate and kill someone. And that's just not possible. And yeah, gl glad that there isn't anyone here. And then she's just sort of like kind of hovering <laughs> over the body, just sort of looking down the hole and it's just, looking down the hole as if like she sees just you know an abyss like beneath the mm -hmm. hole or something that she's just sort of like staring into okay so i got observation rolls from krish and from Geralt. uh so krish one of the things you'll notice uh, as you're looking around is that there is no sign of like a murder weapon uh there's no knife there's no uh, like sharpened blade of any kind, no shiv, etc. Besides which, it's a very large opening. Uh, it's like at least the size of like a grapefruit. And you don't see anything around that would have made this. Um, Jack, you, I'll say with your observation, um, even though um, like he's, you can see him, you, you notice like as you look off to the side that some of his things are piled up, whoever this was. Like, you can see off to the side, he had piled up his clothes, piled up his belongings, and you can peek at them, and you can see that this was a man by the name of Jonas Zhao. Uh, and you can see that he has an ICSC badge. So he's not Sikhson. Um, and you also would notice that part of that badge gives him access to... Uh, like the hydroponics bay and stuff like that. You think he's probably like a botanist or a biologist or something like that. Uh, I will immediately forego anything to do with the body and I will look through his stuff to see if he has any sort of company info. Uh, on his person, you like you can see that all he has really here are like some of his clothes are a little bit soil stained, like dirt stained. Um, you notice uh, hit like a looks like to be some kind of log key for getting probably into his pod and then his badge, which would give him access uh, to this specific uh, building that he's probably been assigned work. So you have what you could use to get into his personal pod and you have what you could use to get into the hydroponics bay. Uh, but that's that's pretty much all on, on all that he right. has on him. Yeah. Yeah. So Mr. Girl isn't trying to sneak it into his pocket, but he's also not letting anyone else know he's doing it. He's just, he just takes those and pockets them. And uh, uh, the hole in uh, guy's chest is it just like clean hole punched through, or is it like bloody and? Uh, yeah, you notice that the it's not a through and through, so you don't think it's like a gunshot wound. Um, it looks. I'll say with your yeah with your obs with your observation it's probably enough it's it's a relatively clean kind of circular formation right um, you can see that inside of it like whatever did it has kind of fractured the sternum the ribs etc you can see a couple of the organs have been pierced and lacerated and kind of spilling left and right. Um, your, I would say, with your experience, your no, it doesn't look like you've probably seen dead bodies before. You've probably seen murder victims before. You've probably seen stab wounds and such. It just doesn't really fit. You know, there's something about this that just doesn't quite align with what you've seen in your experience. Um, so take that for what it's worth. But there's no like entry wound or anything, or exit wound, however you want to put. It. Uh, and it is bloody though. The, the whole floor in the shower is definitely got a sheen of of water and kind of red blood. Uh, has Squish seen the ICSC um, badge? That's up to Jack. 
uh, he he took it out of the pocket and put it directly into his. He was not trying to hide it. Um, but right. yeah. Cool. Thanks. Like he would probably would have brought it up, identified it, put it in his pocket. Okay. Thank you. When we came out here, I mean, we got scientists who want to gather samples of, you know, different locations, whether it be ice or we find some place that's not frozen over, right? And usually those things are kind of like round, shove into the ground, right? Like a fence post digger? Kind of like that. Like, I'm just saying, like, if I had to kill a man, and I've never done it, but if I had to, that would not be the way I would do because that would be awkward as hell, but it would probably... Be that size. And you, Michelle, like, because I think kind of it, like a turn has passed, and so you just suddenly see her. What would be about what size? Like, you know how the, those things you used to get uh, samples of the soil or ice or whatnot out there? Oh, yes. Oh. You're like, saying that's about the size? Like a core hole. Right? Well, they cut that hole right in his core. Right? Tell me something. Have either of you two seen anything like this before? As I look to both um, Michelle and Krisha. Krisha is kind of frowning. Like, there's quite clearly a professional curiosity, if nothing else. Um, like, uh, nothing like this exactly, but this is. This is very clearly intentional. This wasn't an accident. Or, and I apologize for bringing up something, but you know, this is why we do it privately, not to mix the other folks. We done seen some of them working Joes kind of lose their shit, right? What if one of them got it wonky in their head about core sample collection? Well, at this rate, anything's possible. I'm just saying. So Hmm. What, so uh, uh, what I would be curious, and so what she wants to look at is, like, does it look like the person was upright and something went through them and then they fell or they were fallen and then something went through them? Like, is there like an angle yeah. or anything? Uh, you can roll since some time has passed. I'll let you roll another medical aid since your last one basically got squandered by the by the panic. Okay. And then would we have reduced any stress from when we had been out before and then when we were back in Yeah, you sleeping? probably been able to reduce by one. Yeah. That's okay. Because I'm like, holy crap, Life I feel like I really shouldn't be going so high on stress. Uh, so I'm going to go Day one. back down one. Um, all right. Sorry. Did you say medical aid? Medical aid, yeah. Because you're trying to get, okay. like, it's you're trying to do, like, a quick forensic kind of assessment. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> Michelle is not again. doing well at all. You as go I back, oh, go right back to ten again. <laughs> not a good oh, day, for Michelle. Oh, oh god, oh, that just creeps man. you out. Whatever I, it might be, it's um, the, it's 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 a very that 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 would be a, a very large gauge, lo, mm, mm, and then you just see her again, sort mm -hmm. of like looking off, trying to think of like gauge of weapon that would be that, and as she's just sort of holding her hands up and looking off. She just doesn't move from that space for a bit as I am frozen again. Yeah. Professional opinion is invalid. I mean, it is invaluable. Oh, no, man. You know, what I will do is, you know, if I was the sort that potentially, like, had to hide something real quick and then run, you know, just saying if I had to, I'll look around and see if I were to stash something in this place where I think I would do it. Uh, there are a couple, like, temp lockers for, for people to put their stuff in while they're cleaning themselves up. So you could look in there, maybe. Um, okay. But also, if there's, can, there's any grates or, like, maybe if there's, like, some sort of duct system or something. Like, if I were somebody that wanted to put something up that I didn't want somebody to just see easily. You can roll observation. You could roll mechanical if you're specifically looking at, like, like a heavy machinery, if you're specifically looking at things like pipes and grates and stuff like that, if you wanted to take a look at any of that, that's fine. I'll go, observation is my best thing by far. So yeah, I'll go for that. It. Yeah, man, I don't know. He gets <laughs> lost and tied by like, man, 
Back in prison, there was this fella we nicknamed a Bobo, and the one time he took a soup can, uh, he was built like a brick shit house, right? And he did just shove it into that man's chest. It wasn't quite this clean, though. Yes. Well, um, I suppose we don't want panic to break out. Um, no. Seeing as, seeing as how you're the law around here, Krishna, what do you think? The fewer people involved, the better. And uh, sh uh, are there cameras uh, either in here or right outside that would show with this person Definitely walking not in? In the bathroom. Uh, right. Right. Uh, you didn't notice any going into the bathroom, but there are probably some scattered here and there throughout the pods. The bath facilities are kind of like attached via a a hallway uh, that connects each of these kind of pod based living living quarters. So there's right. probably some basic whether or not they're functional yet. Don't know because it is just like this is literally the first night or, you know, the first sleep uh, of, of the station. Right. But, you know, they're, they're probably scattered. And uh, we'll continue to say that to Mr. To, to girl. Um, if you be little involved, the better. I, I want to look at the cameras to see if, uh, see if we can at least narrow down who we're looking for. So I, hmm. I, so I don't want to murder running around. Yes. Um, so you think whatever was used is no longer here? Like they took it with them? I don't see anything. Hmm. Um, yeah. With, with something that was that messy, you think they would leave a trail. Yeah. And I start to look and see if I can find a blood trail. Is there any way to tell how long this body's Sorry. been dead? Uh, a medical aid or a medical aid test. <laughs> 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 be useful. I, I have right. twice tried to look at the body. Right. Super unsuccessfully. Medic is losing her shit right now. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so uh, Chris will say it to girl. Like, uh, I did say that we will involve better, but we we do need to actually do some more investigation on the body. Um. We should yeah, put an out of order there. sign on the door. Like Michelle just sort of suddenly comes back, like from nowhere. Uh, I know where those are. Uh, I get uh, it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Okay. We don't want anyone walking in. I just out of order already. All right. Um, so, Scooter, you head out to go find an actual, uh, an actual mm -hmm. out of order sign. You would probably be able to find one. There's like an environmental control center, uh, and then there's also like a waste management systems, like waste management and recycling area. So I'm sure you would know your way around. And as a roughneck, you would probably be like expected when you're in colony to do some level of maintenance. So you yeah. probably have a decent run of the place. Yeah. And so, so we'll say like as you head out from the bath into, you know, into the main colony, it's still, you know, the, the light situation is just really bizarre because it feels like it's two, three o'clock in the morning. Right. But when you go outside and it's just, you know, uh, but there's fewer people out. Uh, but you do see that there are others that are that are out and active and moving around. You can see that the main uh, like central tower is functional. There appear to be people up there. It almost looks like a like a you know like a, radi a radar tower. And you kind of look up and you can see that there's a handful of people moving around the balcony or through the through the windows. Um, you can see that there are uh, a couple like survey teams that are kind of gearing up to go out and stuff like that. Um, yeah. When I'll I'll say that when you return, uh, make a like when you, when you so we'll say you grab your you grab this little sign or something like a series of pieces of equipment to lock the door and put up like official yeah. don't go in here type of thing. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and make a, um, don't think an observation or a heavy machinery test. One of those things would be fine. Uh, yeah. I, either one of those. Let's see here. I'll tell you what, just observation. Let's do with it. I'm better at heavy machinery, but I want to see things. Sure. Double sixes. Okay. When you're returning 
um, to the to the actual pod. You can you're coming around the outside of that that bath facility. One of the things you notice is that there are some pipes that are coming up from the ground that you know that the working Joes have laid out in advance that all kind of funnel back to like this water filtration section of the, of the, of the colony because you guys are built right in the riverlands, right on this big river of fresh water. So everything kind mm-hmm. of runs through and it powers. You do notice that some of the, some of the, uh, like on the exterior of the bath, the bathhouse area, like some of those pipes coming up out of the ground, they look busted. Like, like they're supposed to go into like the back of this facility, but they're all busted. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm going to have to fix that later. So I guess I'll just <laughs> take a gander at it now. Um, cause you know, I, I, I didn't look too hard at the, you know, the, the human, uh, it Pearson, mm-hmm. uh, but maybe these pipes might fit inside. Anything look funky? Yeah. So when you get over, you'll notice that they have this, they look split. Like you can see like they've been like almost like, uh, blew out. like, tw- like they almost like blew out in some places and you can see on the ground around, there's like chunks of like slush and ice and some of them are just colored with this kind of native algae that has, was probably on your, uh, like your work order list, like whenever you see this, clean it because this is going to clog everything the fuck up. And so you kind of see that around here and it doesn't look like any pipe is missing. It just looks like it burst and split in these different directions. Um, and it does look like the the exterior of the bath pod has suffered some damage as a result so that you can see towards the top and, and like you you think maybe up towards the roof. Like it almost looks like explosive residue uh, from where the pipe like burst. shot up. Yeah, and exactly. over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go stick the signs on the door. Sure. Like you know, out of order. Like biohazard warning. You know, something serious. Uh, then I'm gonna go grab a ladder. Okay. Shimmy on up there. So you'll head over maintenance shed, get some stuff. While he is doing all this, what are the rest of you doing? I would say Michelle might have been waiting outside (laughs) when Scooter got back because she like keeps trying to do things. And so she really needed to catch her breath. So she probably would have been like outside when you came back. And she's just kind of like, uh, and she sort of looks inside a little bit sheepishly, and then she's sort of like, uh, you, 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 you need, where, where are you going? Do you need a hand? Yeah. Uh, the pipes on the back of the building done blew up. And like, it's like it might have shot up and over. But what I'm thinking is there was that much pressure in the pipe. Of course, I didn't look too hard at the body, but like, what if that forceful forceness came up out of the toilet? And blew a hole in him that way. Uh, I, 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 th- I think it would have been a different body part that the hole would have been in. But right. I mean, I see you're like now, thinking about. I know you I, like to play airplane oh. over the top of a toilet, but most most normal people don't do that, Scooter. I don't believe you one bit. Yeah, Listen, uh, I'll, I'll, I can help you though. I yeah, I can help you. Yeah, I mean, everyone has We're, to think a little bit about how Spider Man would use the restroom. And I'm gonna figure it out. Anyway, yeah, come get a ladder with me. We're gonna shimmy up there, see if there's any bits or anything that might shine some light on my exploding pipe theory. I think he okay. would hang upside down, put his head back, and point. You, that's just asking for a wet chin. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. I haven't thought of that. What was uh what was Chris gonna do? I uh, head to the security office to see yeah. if the cameras were hooked up okay. and on the way make of when she is very certain she is alone, make a call to Yuna Kimura. Okay. 
uh, you you head over, look around, and eventually, like no one, no one's following you. There's other people out here, but they are um, they are certainly at a distance from you. And you're just you're like trudging across because the security the security HQ is is a ways from it's like on the other side of the colony, so it's a little bit of a walk. Um, but yeah, the comms go through, and eventually you hear that the familiar voice. Um, and she, uh, like when, when she answers, like it's very professional and she just says, Kimura. Uh, this is, uh, Krish. Another one happened in the bathrooms. I'm looking into it. I'll give you more. Yes. I'm positive. I'll give you more details when I have them. Is it contained? Yes. Limit exposure. If you can, find a place to do a proper examination. Someone you can trust. Not quite sure we have the facilities for forensic examination yet. But if we think it's another one, we need to know for sure. Can't hear you. What should I be looking for? Modus operandi. It varies. The ones on ship were seem to be a strike of opportunity the ones back before departure were entirely different look for commonalities look for anything look for dna look for um, look for anything anything out of the ordinary anything who was the victim? I think his name was Jonas Zhao. Hmm. I don't. I don't know it. Neither do I. I. I do need uh, files of those on the ship. We're efforting still. The crash yesterday has slowed some of our shuttle runs. Some of that information in the bodies themselves have not yet made it down. That's all for now. Thank you. Keep me updated. Will do. Sure hangs up. Okay, and so you head into the HQ. You get access to the no problem scan, etc. They know who you are. You're one of the working marshals here. Um, and Yuna, for instance, for, for everyone else that was listening, who didn't hear that, damn it. But uh, she is the civil marshal. She's basically the head of security, so to speak. Uh, okay, so roll a com tech, Krish, as you try to dig through some of these uh, security, security tapes, security footage. It's pretty spotty. As we've mentioned, working Joe suck. They're not very good at their jobs. <laughs> you can push it if you want to. Yeah, I... Um, yeah, why the hell not? Uh, oh. Okay. Wow. What? <laughs> oh, well. Of the of the footage you're able to get, which is, uh, is, is incomplete, uh, you don't notice... Um, you see... I'll say you see a group of people... Coming and going, a handful of people going in and out to the to the baths. Um, some staying there a little bit longer, probably showering. Others just going in there, probably just for the bathroom, etc. And so they're coming and going. At some point within that, um, this man Jonas went inside. You never see him come out, and you never see anybody go in after him. The problem, though, is that after. For about 10 minutes, there's some kind of interference. 
And so it's all kind of blurry and messed up. You're not sure if it's just the, the weather or if it's the connections and or if it's just the working Joe's not doing their jobs. Sorry to interrupt. Um, interference like static, like the visuals just you can't are see, unclear? Like the, the, it's running, but you can't see anything. It's just kind of like this, got this it, big got it. Thank white you. snow thing. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So Chris is gone. Scooter just went to get a ladder. Now she and now he and Michelle are going up to the roof. Are Jack and Pete doing anything? Or Skeeter? We got the uh, sound no. up. Wow. Uh, Jack is uh, just kind of standing around, looking a little bit useless. Yep. <sighs> so, uh, is this your first body? I imagine you look pretty important. I imagine you don't have to deal with this too often. Uh, no, it is not. Oh, okay. We had you act all cool, today. but you know your shit. Okay. We had bodies earlier today, if you don't recall. Yeah, I knew that. But no, I've had bodies before that, too. Yeah. So, like, I don't know if it's an official or like an unofficial sort of deal do we need to move this is there like a particular way we um like if there's not a body there's not a murder i know that for yes alleged reasons from a company perspective i would hate for anyone to find this from a forensic yes. perspective i would rely on krishna and michelle okay good because i don't know how the hell you dispose of a body i'll help with some lifting but like I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I'm willing to do a lot for the company. Man, I'm here to make money. I'm here to get some stuff done. I'm not chopping up nobody. Okay? No. I, I ain't there for that. Your dedication to the company is noted. And it was a lot easier when we were out in space. There's an airlock. <laughs> You're all right. You are all right. Well, thank you. Your approval means much to me. Yeah. So, it's as true. that conversation is happening, we see behind them Scooter and Michelle going up to the roof. Both of you, uh, as you come up here, make observation tests as you look around. So, before I do see. that, uh, thank okay. you, audience, for some bits for stress reduction. So, we're oh. going to spend one of those because okay. I would like to get back down to only three stress. Such so, a, such a cheater. Such a cheater. <laughs> Do they have a command for that? I've frozen twice already. I would like it's to. It's a very uh, cold a moon. It's very icy. Okay. Thank you, Chip. You said observation, right? Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're up on a roof not doing very well, Scooter, are we? <laughs> oh, so I just remembered the... I might be afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> as, come, as the two of you come up here. We hear the conversation going between Skeeter and Jack below about bodies and disposing of them and what you're willing to do for the company. And as the two of you get up top of this pod, you start moving around. And first of all, you realize there's definitely been damage up here. Not only that, but the whole dang rooftop is just kind of coated in, in ice. Uh, and so you find yourself just kind of slipping and sliding. And every step you take, you're like, you're, you're, thre you're almost going to flip and fall off. Other cases, like you feel yourself just kind of steady. And then there's like this sag to the roof as well. Uh, Cause it looks like Seeks and once more chose some very poor, you know, construction materials. Uh, and you're worried perhaps a little bit about too much weight in certain places. Like you got to step on, on the junctions and not on like the, the sort of the flat parts in between. Um, so you two are, are, are struggling a bit up here. Um, did either of you actually pass? No, none of, neither of you passed. No, I will say that <laughs> no we did not. As you look around, uh, you notice, I'll say, Scooter, you notice that there is a very clear like level of ice up here, a good two inches maybe or so, uh, almost over the entirety. Uh, but you also notice that that ice is very dirty, and you can see that the, it's not very clean water. It doesn't look like it was properly filtered. Maybe maybe it's you know uh, uh, precipitation. You're not sure. But you can see it's very, very dirty here and there. Um, it does, I'll just, I'll say... It does look, though, like there is a very clear 
section of the ceiling that has suffered some damage. Uh, and you can see coming out from that damaged area, there's like a radiation of cracks and tears and things like that. Um, do you have any equipment with you? Do you have any like tools? I don't see why I would because I got up to go give Skeeter <laughs> toilet, toilet paper. paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. You did go to I the mean, maintenance shed though. You did go to the maintenance shed to get the uh, the sign the and the ladder. Yeah. And the, the, uh, Although yeah, the ladder. it makes sense that you rolled tr tremble <laughs> if you're like shivering cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and don't see just, why I would. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you think this the roof of this suffered damage is pretty much all you, I would say you would get without okay. like a, some time. And I rolled nervous twitch, so my stress level and the stress level of all friendly NPCs in short range of me increases by one. So I feel like Michelle is just like Stan, right? Sco Scooter, do you have to step on every low spot? Can you not see that there are low spots? Listen. Do you have to fucking step in every one. Everyone. They... I'm going to stomp a few times. <laughs> I, you know what? Do it. Just freaking do it. Roll. Why uh, are you? Roll strength oh there, Scooter. Oh yes. <laughs> Just roll straight up strength. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, you know, yeah that's I got a, a success. As you stomp a few times, the panel that the two of you are standing on gives, and you both go falling down into the <laughs> bath facility, bouncing off the walls, banging on this or that. Both of you can take a point of damage as you fall down oh, no. and you crash it. Oh, man. No. <laughs> I feel like what? I'm using up all the good rolls. <laughs> It's fine. These are great rolls. What? Funny things are happening. Ah. What? And she's just like, what the hell? Listen. Ow. You. Well, you were being a dick up there. <laughs> and uh, I have a combative personality. <laughs> I was trying to point out to you that this was a possibility. If you kept stomping <laughs> on the low spots, we could fall through. You and said, we hey. Fucking fell through. Can you be careful? I noticed this, it's sagging a lot. <laughs> Not, why do you got to step on every fucking low spot in the goddamn galaxy? Do, do I sound like a company agent that's going to talk to you like that? I'm sorry. Would you like to manage your footfalls a little bit more carefully? No, that's not how I talk. Where, that been where are they right now? I would they say anywhere that near Skeeter us? and Jack, who were outside nearby, probably yeah. heard the commotion. And you look up and you realize they're not standing on the roof anymore. <laughs> okay, I would I would go in to check, but I don't know if I would catch that. That's fair. But I'd really like to catch the last part of that. I'll tell you what, roll an observation <laughs> test. Roll an observation <laughs> test. If you succeed, you, you over here. Yeah. You're going to roll like five successes just yeah. because... Pretty close. Three. three. You absolutely <laughs> nice. hear that. Absolutely. More than I've rolled the, the whole night. And you hear that. Uh, I'm sorry. You know how I would react to this? You should have been there. She was talking all sorts of shit about you. And I believe it was company agent, not necessarily me. But uh, the roof is here. It's Which... good to know what you think of company agents. That's noted. Well, company agents don't necessarily, aren't necessarily known for just cutting through the shit and telling people how it really is. Is that you want fair? Let me get you a shovel if you're going to keep digging. <laughs> uh, we're also. <laughs> she not... just sort of looks over and was really mad at Scooter like 30 <laughs> seconds ago and now is like. Hmm. <laughs> We're also not known for losing our temper. So. I guess well, you don't have to worry too much then. That's what a relief that is. You realize that the roofs here are shitty, right? Like, he stomped like once and we fell through. 
That's but in not. all fairness, it looks yes. like the pipes that blew up on the back of the building might have damaged the roof as well. They they were built by GES. That's correct. Yes. And if they were Sikhs and roofs, they would have been fine. It's like have we learned anything out. yet? Do we know anything more than we did half an hour ago? Well, I, I did not kill could... it with my shit. I was hoping to hear some news about um, what had happened to the body. I'll tell you what. I'll go investigate the body. We have a doctor right here. Are you sure? Uh, She's not too good. Thanks. Yeah. She couldn't even walk on a roof without knocking a hole in it. Your expertise is why I chose you, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. Because... I mean, there's there's there is shit up on the roof. Like there's stuff on the roof that you should probably figure out. Ah uh, yes, um, scooter skeeter. Um, I know we we have a trifling matter such as this body here on the floor, but would you be so kind as to take care of the roof? It's really urgent, according to Michelle, and I like to listen to those who uh, mm -hmm. speak mm -hmm. up. Oh, I'll just send the pup up there. Oh, thank you so much. They didn't even have to climb up in the first place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. No. Uh, Comtech roll. Comtech Okay. Roll. Yep. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Okay, just kills it. Comtech. It's going really well. This, this is a very, <laughs> It's like Keystone Cops situation going on. Yeah. <laughs> Got my little bones in there. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Your pop goes up just fine. And it goes through the newly opened hole in the ceiling because it's the shortest distance. Why not? And it starts uh, <laughs> and it starts scanning around. The problem, obviously, is that they have certainly compromised uh, what was up here for sure. Uh, but with your three successes, one thing you do notice, um, they did fall kind of closer towards, we'll say, the sinks than the showers. Uh, but the whole roof, to some degree, has been uh, has been damaged. You can see there's there's certain panels that have been ripped, torn. You can see the joints themselves have started to split apart. You do notice, though, that there is a section of the roof over the showers um, that has no, that has like a, you can tell that there's something different about the material. Uh, that it's like patched up. And as you look at it, you realize that there is a whole section of it. Uh, maybe it's just a few inches or like a foot or so, uh, like, you know, by yay big or so that is, um, that has been patched up, but there was a hole in it, a very clear hole in the ceiling. Uh, but now it's kind of covered with ice and that sludge, that like kind of algae sludge that, uh, that you have too probably heard about it. You're not as you're not a roughneck necessarily. You're not a maintenance guy, but you might have heard about it too, just in your uh, your mm -hmm. debriefs here and there. Yeah, I'll, I'll so, point that out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep, I heard something's up with that material. There was a hole in it. Maybe there some was already a hole. Yeah, well, there was another spot. Uh, more over the showers where the material's different. Somebody cobbled something together or whatnot. Maybe there had been a hole. Maybe like this is just the biggest fuck all icicle that happened. How long has this building been how, there? Do you know? How would that diameter have compared to the diameter of the hole in the body? Slightly. This larger. is where we compare orifices. <laughs> it all comes back to that. I'll uh, give my calipers. <laughs> no, you won't. Oh. No. Uh, Jack, your question about how long have these buildings been been up? The so you would know, uh, especially you. Uh, but probably Krish as well, um, <laughs> that the working Joes were sent by Seekson, um, so that they are essentially, they, they have essentially been building the colony, uh, in various, like various features surrounding the colony, like the, like a bridge here, a bridge there, that kind of stuff. Um, and they, they've been here essentially months ahead of time. Uh, so like they were sent first and then the, then like it was staggered and then the colony ship was sent with the, with humans. And so, a handful of advanced team engineers were sent out to sort of make sure that the Sikhs in working uh, working androids were working properly, that kind of thing. So there were like a, a very small advanced team of engineers. 
Um, but all of this stuff you too would know is seeks and equipment. <laughs> like everything here is seeks and like this is all like like oh. cheap. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if you knew that or if you were just like sort of being the company man, like, oh yeah, it's clearly a GES problem. Yeah, I mean we'll say that now. But yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so it would uh only it wouldn't have even been here for a full year yet. Um, yeah, probably not quite that long. Okay. You know, with uh, it being less than a year here, I would I would I wouldn't think that it would fall into such a state of disrepair, even with GS materials. So, so if there was a hole, did you all ever figure out what direction that this person was old? No, I I have not yet, and this this is not the place to look at a body. This well. Area, okay, right. it, we need to find a way sure? to get this body to the medical area because that is where I can do. And so she's totally blaming like the environment on why she's like completely failing at like looking at this thing. We need to we need to find a way to. Um, I'm assuming with some amount of um, uh, subterfuge, get this body from where it is now over to uh, my medical area where we can get a better look at this. So. We can, I, I can, I think I can go over there and I can grab, um, yeah, we can, we can, we can do this. And, and she'll sort of look over to Mr. Girl. We, we don't want to just leave this here all night. Can we want we to move say it, right? that yes. Push has come back at this point yeah. with a body bag? <laughs> yeah, sure. That, that's fine. So, so you're from saying. From the security you, office, you I guess. You arrive, by the way. You arrive in the whole freaking bathroom in shambles. What the hell did you guys do? I was gone for 10 minutes. Uh, uh, it's a shit roof. Girls! It's ch uh, ch boy, what? This is We're, your fault, obviously. But just listen, I got an idea. I got a theory. She's going to throw the it. body back at girls. <laughs> Here, bag him up. Okay, as long as uh, it's not me. Uh, I'll, I'll get that. I'll get that. Yeah, yes, yes, Scooter. What, what was your theory? So someone went up on the roof and had a hole in it and shot him while he was on the shitter and then patched the roof up real quick and then went and compromised the pipe behind it so it exploded, spraying ice all over it. That way no one could examine it and figure it out that's where it came from. So that's why I was saying, like, if we want to look at the body and, like, see if it's, like, at a, a downward angle, like someone shot him with a giant yes, hole. Yes, yes. Once, once I, I get, does anybody want to grab his feet as she's, like, trying to get him into this, like, Mr. body Girl. bag, like... Mr. Girl wordlessly helps you. Okay. Prish, yeah. I, I don't know a lot about a lot of things, but I'm pretty sure I know that this is like compromising a crime scene, like with information. I I think collapsing a roof is probably worse than compromising the crime scene but, in any other way. What what happened exactly? Oh, he I saw a turtle the up there. Then he just goes I fucking did. crazy over turtles. <laughs> I didn't see a turtle this time. No, I saw that the pipes on the back of the building were blown up, and they, it looks like it was spraying something on the roof. So I went to go you look. You did this? Yeah, I did that. And Michelle went up there too, and like the roof was kind of <sighs> weebling and wobbling. And mm -hmm. rather than just Michelle saying like, "Hey, it feels weak. Please, we need to watch our steps so it doesn't collapse," she started yelling at me. And I just got agitated, mm -hmm. so I jumped real hard. Another way to put that is he doesn't re take responsibility for his own fuck up. Oh, okay. Listen, I did and, it. And as and as the bag is sort of the body is being put into the bag, um, scooter. Would you be so kind as to provide assistance? And so she's gonna like kind of use like what you were saying she should have said See, instead, and she's gonna like parrot that back of course to I'll you. Help you. Super sarcastically, of course, but the words are gonna match the words. Uh huh. Uh huh. I get your tone, and I'll remember it. But your words were nice, so I'll help. Thank you. Like, you said just like Jackie Boy. Yeah, Mr. Girl awkwardly steps out of the way. Then. But you you had his feet. You had it. But 
<laughs> it's fine. I'll just go pick him up by his feet and shove him in the bag. And he is very much in the bag. No problem. Okay. So what's next? So is Michelle and somebody else, I presume, going to take this body over to medical? And then... I think what's, Michelle and Scooter have head and feet you? at the moment. Well, okay. you said we got to use substrate subterfuge wouldn't it be kind of dumb to just carry a body bag across the yard where everyone could see it like two in the morning most people are asleep that's fine there are so many people out there right before i fell through that roof why don't i just go get my little cart with my big ass toolbox on the back i already got the out of order sign i'll just pull it up to the door we'll shove the corpse in the box and just drive it on over where it needs to go. That way it's way more inconspicuous. Do you moonlight as a proctologist? Yep, he does. Unlicensed. <laughs> said an ass toolbox. He, oh, a big ass yep, toolbox. That's exactly what he meant. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Listen. I don't recall Adam using his company agent ability. <laughs> To throw somebody into danger. Mm -hmm. That is not a free pun, sir. It is not. Everyone take a stress from it. Uh, (laughs) Worth it. So, Scooter, you go get your your tool cart uh, or Mm -hmm. one of the maintenance carts of some kind. Sure. Um, maybe there's like these little golf cart, like mini carts. Yeah, that's what I'm around. thinking with the gar- yeah. golf cart yeah. with like the cage on the back to keep all the and tools just safe. Kind of fold just it on in there. Just them in there. Like, yeah, throw a couple listen. tarps on top of it. No problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Who Who is going to medical and who is doing something else? Uh, going to medical. Going to medical. Okay. So Chris and Michelle going to medical. Uh, Scooter, Skeeter, and Jack. What are you guys doing? So, do we have anything that we can clean this up with so that uh, no one is the wiser? Mm, I do. Um, hey, what? I'll drive, and you know, Scooter, he's a cleaning expert. He is a proctologist by trade. Mm, he I knows am. how to clean shit. I just need to go get that five gallons of diesel that I got in the shed. We'll get it cleaned right up. All right, good. Well, okay. um, is this something I can leave you to? Sure, it's better if there's no witnesses. Yeah. Uh, Skeeter, you wanted to mm-hmm. go somewhere? Is that correct? I was going to offer to drive, you know, the package. Oh, yes. Well, I suppose I should go supervise. Okay. So, Scooter, are you trying to torch this place? Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. Um, you totally can do that. That's not a problem. Uh, but could you just mm-hmm. roll just for funsies? Uh, I want, <laughs> no reason. What's it called? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> is it mobility? Yeah, mobility for like stealthy. Just to see if you can do this without anyone really catching you or seeing if you can avoid mm-hmm. some of the mm-hmm. security cameras that are around mm-hmm. here and there. I mean... <laughs> Jack did tell me to do it and I told him my plan and he said okay I'll leave you to it mm-hmm. but you know maybe less questions is better sure I'll roll it okay okay I'll roll it <laughs> wow <laughs> so much stress three freaking face huggers on a stress dates mm. okay mm. So it is a, for some reason, Scooter, it is a very nerve wracking time for you as you've been left all by yourself. It's like three o'clock in the morning. The the sun's still sort of out, even though it's still kind of a gloomy looking day because of the cloud cover. And you are by yourself trying to torch a bathroom. Yep. Which you're able to do. It's not like a question of whether you do it or not. It's just maybe somewhere along the way, maybe someone saw you. All. Yeah, it's one of those things. They see me standing <laughs> outside of it, no eyebrows and singed coat. <laughs> I got no <laughs> idea what happened. <laughs> okay. Go ahead uh, okay, done. Uh, Let's go over to the medical. All right. So, 
I'm not going to ask <laughs> Melissa for a roll uh, because I don't want her to Thank freeze. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> I like, like to actually this. see this body yeah, I, I feel like use my training. For sure. So, um, very clearly, it was a large puncture wound. You So, in answer to Scooter's question, he's not wrong. It did have kind of a vertical, uh, kind of a vertical entry, like uh, kind of on an angle. Like it went through the upper part of his chest and kind of deeper into uh, his body. And you can tell that basically by the organs and how they are actually lacerated in some particular way. Um, you, you are quite certain that it wasn't a gunshot, uh, that it looks like the cut, the cuts and lacerations are too precise for it to be any kind of, uh, any kind of gunshot that you think would have made a hole this size. Uh, if it was like a sniper shot or something, maybe, but like not in this case. The other thing I'll say that you notice is that inside the body, there are little tiny chunks of some kind of foreign substance, um, but you're able to quickly identify it as some of that kind of algae kind of uh, that shows up in a lot of the water. And so like it's just it pops up. There it is. Uh, and you can see that there are little chunks and flakes of it inside the body. Um I would also point out that to alleviate the concerns of potential players and people listening, that the it clearly went in and it did not come <laughs> out, if that yes, makes sense. Yes, good, good clarification. Okay. <laughs> so so I, I, it seems to have come um, kind of on, on a downward motion. Given the fact that there was sort of a question of like a boring drill or something like that, like does it mm -hmm. seem like a spinning motion could have done doesn't seem it, this it, it, whatever this was it was quick it was fast and it was like one fail swoop as opposed to it being multiple stabs or twisting or turning uh, or anything like that um so you're pretty sure it's not a drill uh, at least it's not a drill that was on turning and all that kind of stuff do you think um, comment about uh, working Joe maybe have having gone a little off the rails or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, does the puncture align roughly size wise with like a fist, <laughs> a working Joe fist? Um, I mean, it's about a grapefruit in diameter, so. I suppose, yeah, I suppose. But in fairness to Working Joe's, it's probably just about any, you know, any decent medium-sized sure. person it's hand. It's uh, cylindrical? Is yeah. the, the puncture is Yeah, it's like you can tell as you lay them down and as you move them that it definitely, the entry wound is a little bit from a like a, a vertical angle. It's as if like maybe he was leaning back and like washing his hair or something like that and then it kind of went through the chest. There was never an entry wound, so you're pretty, an exit wound, so you're pretty sure whatever it was went in. And it never kind of came out somewhere else, like a like a bullet, like a through and through, nothing like that. So it's oh, it's actually, in through the chest, dressed? not in through the back. Oh no, he was butt naked. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he would have been more in a standing position than a sitting position, because a sitting position more than likely would have been from the back and down. So that's sort of the conversation she's having with with uh, Krish. Here, uh, having been on the roof for the time that I was on the roof before falling on my ass back inside, there was definitely algae up there, and there's definitely algae in the pipes, and there's definitely algae in the wound. So that's we will definitely want to see what um, any investigations that have been done preliminarily um, about this algae here. Um, and if there hasn't been any research done yet, we should probably initiate some. And are we all there? Uh, I think everyone but Scooter. Okay. Who's busy and being in our was, sense. Was there an exit wound? Mm -hmm. No. No. This went in from kind of an upward direction into the chest and did not exit. So did you find what it was that entered him? No, I, I would need to have 
whatever device or object it might be to do a comparison for size and type of wounds around the edge. Hmm. But as of yet, I have not seen what it would have been. With a hole in the ceiling, it would almost seem to be like it was something that punctured the ceiling and fell through, but that would have stayed inside with no exit wound. With no exit wound and it not being inside, it almost seemed like it was stabbed in and then taken out or removed after. Is this it is also... in line with what you have found? Well, we certainly did not find the weapon. And it is also possible, I believe, that that location might not have been his place of death. That might have just been where the body was moved to. Perhaps. I'm not sure that I can ascertain that information just yet. Uh, while this is happening, uh, Krish would like to look up details about Jordan's hour, like whatever is immediately sure. accessible. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you would know, like I was mentioned before, he works for ICSC, he is a botanist. Mid-level scientist. He's not a supervisor, but he's not a grunt or anything like that. Somewhere in between. Um, when you look him up, he um, his specific task is studying basically the flora uh, of the area. And his his main job is one of the team that's focusing on edible flora. So they're trying to decipher like what plants on the planet can be can be used. Right. Uh, initial surveys suggested that a lot of the, the, the flora and fauna here could probably sustain uh, a human colony. And so he's doing the finer review of it. At least that's that's what his charge was coming here. Um, you, that's what's basically on his record. So if you're looking him up on like medical records and things like that as well, um, as far as you can tell, if you're looking at like Michelle's like or one of the medical uh, medical base compound. He doesn't have any like medical history that suggests anything crazy, uh, broken arm, something like that. Uh, but there's no lingering medical issues. Uh, most anybody who would be on this mission wouldn't have those anyway. Uh, they would probably be a liability. Um, but that's all, that's all that would be in his file. Uh, Jack, did manage to i think jack i think it was jack you you went through the uh his belongings that were uh near the shower and it had his badge which would let him let you into the hydroponics bay but to be to be fair chris you probably wouldn't have any difficulty getting to the hydroponics bay anyway uh and then and most of you would probably be able to get in there one way or the other like scooter you probably would at some point go in there over the coming days and in months and years for repair uh, Michelle, you're a medical doctor, uh, doctorate, you know, you probably, so it's not like it's like a hidden thing that no one would ever be able to get into. It's just, that's just where he works. So he has like a, like, you know, the, the way to get in. And then you also have like his entry key, his entry badge for his own personal pod, the way that you all have your own personal pods. Uh, but that's all that you would have like on the personnel file. There's nothing really that stands out. Well, at some point, um, I'd like to take a look inside his room. If anybody would like to accompany me. I don't know for that. I've, I've had my share of dead bodies me. from that, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, no. Maybe that's a better job for the official officer. You are correct. She, she was addressing that to, to girl. <laughs> yeah. I you. You're correct. I'm forgetting my place. Sorry. <laughs> like, uh, he's ICST. Can you handle that or do I need to do anything? Oh. Um, I am curious. As I know that much. I wonder if there would be anything in his room that we could find that would give us more information. Well, right. some of us could go to the room and some of us could go to the lab. See what there is to see. 
see if you can find out what he had been working on because if he was working on plot life here and there's algae that is notable maybe there's a connection okay so I would like to go to his room okay all right so uh, a couple people are going to the room uh, so Krish Jack Michelle what are you uh, Skeeter are you going as well I mean, I'm just going to say, I'll look in the lab, but, like, I might be the last person that should be looking in the lab. <laughs> I might sort be of better feel like Michelle would paradise. be super, like, good in the lab. Like, that's my reflexive. I, I can certainly go to the lab. I, I did, um, with Scooter, get to see the algae up close that was on the roof. I can see if there's anything that looks similar in the lab. To the lab, I will go. Gotcha. And if anything comes up, I'll be the asshole that draws attention. Well, you do what you need to do. Okay. That Actually, no, I won't sounds draw attention. Great. Scooter, perhaps As everyone's your moving in different directions. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. Uh, Scooter, perhaps your observations will be helpful. What you've seen of the algae. Am I back from my. Well, that's what I was going to say, because he was busy oh, yeah, torching yeah, a place. Yeah. Right. So mind. I'll say that, Didn't Michelle, forget. you see a fire has started in the bathing facilities as you go past them in the direction of the hydroponics bay. And you see there's, like, Stan with his cart, like, in the wide fucking open. It's just, like, right there. And he's just putting an empty diesel can back onto the cart. <laughs> and that's what you see at like 3 30 in the morning as you pass by you see that's why inbreeding is bad <laughs> i know he's my own kid sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of like looks at you <laughs> like, i'm kidding but he is stupid <laughs> all right so now that you're all sort of back together Who's going? Who's going to the? Uh, who's going to the guy's room? Okay, one. Just going for sure. Jack, Krish. I will go to the lab because I know okay. about the lab. Okay. All right. And, and Michelle Skeeter. looks so excited that she gets both brothers. In oh, okay. Okay. So Skeeter, Skeeter, yeah. Lab. <laughs> we'll start with Geralt and, and Chris. You you get over to his quarters. You are in. First of all, you're in enemy territory, so to speak, or frenemy territory, as you go into a pod that's specifically designated for ISC SC personnel. Now, it is very, very late, and so the chances of you running into people is fairly low. And fortunately, I did a roll. You, uh, you do manage to get inside. You have the badge, no problem. You get through a couple different, uh, a couple different hallways, and then you find his specific pod, and you... Use the use the key, opens up, you go inside and you close it. Now it's the exact same model as yours. It's these tiny little coffin rooms. Like they're really small. No one really fits into them. It's it's pretty terrible. And so it's not a very big place. So even two people standing in it, like it's not the roomiest of things. But both of you can roll uh, an observation test uh, if you want to start searching around. And... Uh, can roll it, yeah, you can roll it separately and we'll see what we get. All right. So Chris, you got a you got one success, and Geralt, you got three six uh, four successes, excuse me, and you panicked a little bit, but you were keeping it together. Okay. So maybe you're just, just the nerves of knowing that it, it already rolled for you. Oh, it already did. Okay. Yeah, it rolled for you. Uh you're keeping it together. So maybe it's just the nerves of that you are if you're caught. Like into another, like it could look kind of weird. You have Krish with you, but at the same time, like even the colony marshal stuff is divvied up between a of the three different groups. So it is still kind of a, a dicey situation. Oh yeah. Uh, if if you're caught, but I'll say that as you look around, um, you notice that in his in his uh, in his room, uh, he's got what looks like a he has unpacked a stack of hydroponics research text so you see all these pretty standard stuff you flip through them 
uh, you notice that he's got a personal data pad that's got some standard calling communications. You can see you guys all have something similar. In one of his um, is one of his research texts. You do notice a a worn photo of a family. Uh, you, I'll say, Jack, you you find in one of the books. Uh, in the back, there's this tiny little cutout section uh, of pages, and you see there's a data stick that has been inserted into it. And then, Krish, as you're looking around, you notice that under underneath the bed, there's, like, like when you bend down and look, there's nothing there immediately, but then maybe you shine a light and you notice, like, underneath the spring, there looks to be a small notebook of some kind which you can push the mattress up and slide out and so one of you has a an, like what looks like a data stick of some kind and then the other has a uh, a notebook um krish when you open it up you notice that it's not so much a notebook as it is kind of like a uh, like personnel files so you can see it's like a like a folder and it's got like a rubber band wrapping around it like old school you pull it out under the under the rubber band, look at look inside, and there's some bios on two Sikhs and employees. Uh, both of them are in the tech department. Like basically, they handle Apollo maintenance, they handle communications, they do all, any kind of tech. They're they're IT effectively, right? Uh, one is named Maya Henderson, and one is named uh, Luis Ramirez. Now. As you're reading through them, Krish, you might recognize them. You might not. You have access to a lot of personnel files. The only thing you probably don't have, there's probably different command levels. And so you might not have like the personal files of higher end admin, but most regular folk on the colony, you would probably know. Maybe at some point you studied them prior to going to cryo for the trip or when you came out of cryo, when you entered system, whatever it might be. You've never read some of the details that you're seeing in these files. Maya Henderson um, looks like there's all there looks like there's some sort of material that essentially is evidence that she has been selling Sikhs and tech um, despite being a Sikhs and employee. Uh, and then with Luis Ramirez, you can see that there is some kind of evidence of like fraud or embezzlement at a previous job. Uh, she's, she's pocketing that sure. without saying a word to, to okay. Jack. And, and Jack, Jack's for doing yours, the same. You would need a, you would need a console in like a contact role and to see if you see what's on this. Like you, you, you could try to use, he, he does actually have, like a pad here, like you can try to access it here, but you you would need a contact a contact rule. It's not something you can actually do it. Like think of it like a like a fancy flash drive, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, he's not actively trying to hide it, so he'll go ahead and use the console. Okay, uh, it does seem to be encrypted, so need a so like you can see yeah. password. So you can roll contact if you think you uh, want to give that a try. Uh, while he's doing that, he'll say, "Did you find anything?" And. Um, just some notes about a uh, few personal. Something we can uh, look up later. So much panic. So mm -hmm. much panic. Weird. Weird. You. You're uh, not I reacting to the, the stress. The stick. <laughs> you hear and you hear voices outside. Uh, you mm -hmm. hear something like, you're know, like, hey, uh, uh, something like, maybe it's some, maybe it's a knock on the door. Actually, maybe it's like. <laughs> Hey, Jonas, you up? Come on, man. We want to get on. Jonas. Mr. Girl ah. silently looks over at Krishna or Krisha. Uh, I'm going to just. Uh, is, is there a way to like open the door a little and just stick my head out so that like the room is not seen? Uh, Yeah. I think so. You slide it open a little bit uh, okay. and you peek your head out. Yeah. And you can see there's a man 
probably mid thirties. And he's like, Oh, Oh, uh, um, um Jonathan and I are busy. Well, uh, I thought we were going to go on the, uh, on the river survey. Um, yeah, no, I, after we're done. All right. Bye. <laughs> you close the door. Okay. And, uh, and you hear like fucking piece of shit. Like <laughs> they start walking away. All right. Let's, um, let's get over to the hydroponics bay. Uh, as three of you head over, it is three ish in the morning or so. Um, I'll tell you what, Scooter, roll. That's me. Hmm. High or low, Chuck? Hi. Okay. Uh, you, I'll say your maintenance key gets into a lot of the main rooms or a lot of the main buildings. And this is in fact one of them. And so, nice. and so the hydroponics card that you have from him will work as well, but you also can do it too. When you go inside, uh, the three of you, it is a very large building um, with all manner of kind of glass slanted walls here and there to presumably allow for sunlight if and when it comes. Um, you can see that there are these shutters that have been set up to probably control that a bit. Uh, when you walk in, there's definitely a kind of an odd scent, sort of a like a a weird odor it's kind of pungent um but then again it's a hydroponics bay it might just be fertilizer or some such uh you don't hear anyone moving around you don't see anyone everything's really dark um there are like a handful of these big long tables with a few displays on them with some that 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 seem to be like just gestating in some particular way uh but michelle just like the medical bay there's just all manner of like rea like rearrangement. Like you can tell that whatever the Joes were doing in here, they had it all backwards and messed up, etc. And it looks like that the the people who are working here are doing a lot like you are having to do, which is kind of rearrange everything. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact that there are some functional consoles or are some functional uh, uh, experiments that are going on. Uh, but there's a lot like they still are probably doing. What do you guys want to do? I I don't generally like to speak ill but these shows they have a job to do and they've been doing a shit job of whatever they were supposed to be doing mm -hmm. i don't know what they mm -hmm. were doing instead but it was not setting things up to specifications that's why i don't let computers inbreed that's true you too i got their zeros and ones mm. crossed right what okay and so she sort of looks to Scooter, do you see anything that looks like what we saw up on the roof? So she's just trying to like remember what that looked like, but Scooter sort of had a better view of yeah. it. I'll take a look uh, around, see what I can find. Yeah, and I think since you had a good look at it, no observation necessary, you find it. Like there's definitely a couple of these like gestation pods where you can see, uh, you can definitely see that there's like chunks of it. It looks very slimy. It's almost, it almost looks like wilted cooked spinach but more with like mm. a, like a bluish tint to it. Uh, but yeah. you can see it in a few of these pods for sure. Yeah. I'll point it out. Like, Oh, here's some of it. Here's some of it. You got to clean it out of the pipes regularly. Cause this stuff will build and compact and just make a mess out of things. And so Michelle wants to sort of look to see if there's like a tag or a, an identification number or anything like that. To then try to like go over to the computer and kind of cross reference like whatever this might be called or yeah, named absolutely. or numbered. Uh, it is. There's not a, like a actual name. It's just sort of like a serial number uh, is mm -hmm. where it's at. Like no one's specifically started naming things yet. Uh, but if you take it, you go over towards the the computers. If you enter in your own uh, your own credentials, you do gain access, uh, and you will see some basic write ups. It looks like there are some, um, like the, the more recent entries are very much what Scooter just mentioned. People complaining about this stuff getting clogged in pipes. Mostly it's, it's folks like him, like maintenance workers and things like that, uh, who are lodging a lot of various complaints. And they're essentially 
one of the high like the high tasks for the botany uh, crew here is to figure out some kind of way to get rid of it, uh, something that could potentially kind of weed it out in a particular way. Um, if you dig back even further, you do notice that there were some original, um, like some of the original entries uh, were by, uh, hang on, let me get the name for you, uh, by someone by the name of a um, Farah Novik, Seekson, and it says advanced team. And what looks to yeah. be is it looks to be just sort of like a the first discovery and kind of messing around with it. And Farah, uh, she's a, she's essentially kind of giving this basic physical description where it was found, how, like what kind of ways it was seen on the colony before like any kind of human interaction and such. Um, she describes it as being particularly prevalent. Uh, in and around like the riverbeds and such. Uh, but at the same time, like tiny little particulate matters will detach and then you can kind of see them. If you pour, if you try to, and like she cautions, like don't drink the water directly from the river, boil it first or, you know, strain it, filter it, that kind of thing. Um, the nose that she has is that uncooked, it can kind of make you nauseous, but doesn't really seem to have any like negative effect beyond that. All right, so, you know, they talk about, you know, like invasive weeds and things like that. Well, this was here before any of us got here. So we seem to be uh, building ourselves in its area. So gets in the water, got a bowl of water, don't drink it. It'll, uh, Skeeter, you know, you were like faking back mm. there. Mm -hmm. It'll do that to you if you just drink the water without, uh, you know, boil, filter, all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, noted. it's been here. Uh, looks like this uh, Ms. Novik from the advanced team. One of the first things that they found when they got here was this this here uh, algae stuff over by the rivers. We should probably go some riverbeds, figure out what it does. Maybe. I don't know. It's an idea. Uh, first... Well, Skeeter, you were going around this place looking for secrets. I'm going to go around this place looking for dead bodies. Okay. Give me a observation test for that, though. I got two successes and a tremble. Okay. So <laughs> uh, it's getting a little awkward as you're moving about and you flip on a switch, maybe for a light to go on. And it goes on and then flickers off. And you go, you switch another, it goes on and then flickers off. God damn it, I'm going to have yeah. to fix that too. And then from mm. very far deep in the, in the building, you hear... <laughs> when you look up, you notice that one of those shutters for the kind of the slanted half wall, half roof has mm -hmm. opened up. And you can see there's a chunk of a light coming down in the far distance. Um, the other thing you notice, Scooter, is that in one section of the uh, of the building, like the floor itself is kind of saggy, much like the rooftop was. Do I remember if there's a basement to this building? Uh, as far as you know, there shouldn't be basements to any of these buildings as they're all just modular pods that are dropped on relatively flat land. Supposedly the working Joes to use, uh, and the advanced team, uh, use like earth flatteners to place some of these pods down. Uh, and even when you've looked around, some of the working Joes have been using those types of heavy machinery to continue to try to flatten and create this sense of roads and, and pathways. But you're pretty sure, no, there's not, um, there is a river that essentially runs right against the city or right against the town from which like it funnels into like the water filtration and things like that. So the, the idea that, that if you dig any deeper, it might not be a good place to dig. Okay. Okay. 
I didn't open the door and the floor is weebly wobbly. Are you stepping on the weebly wobbly parts again? Yeah, but this is a legit shouldn't be weebly wobbly. I'm going to give it a jump. Okay. You leap up and you jump. Go ahead and roll strength. Yep. 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 Mistakes. Mistakes. Fine. I'm sure it's fine. We're Mistake. investigating. Three success. Smash through. But I'll say because there's no stress, you actually smash through in a way that doesn't cause you uh, a oh, whole yeah. lot of damage. As you seem to break through the floor and find yourself in some kind of depression, this underground cavern, so to speak, beneath the hydroponics bay. As that happens, this, yeah. uh, before you continue, uh, Michelle, Skeeter, the two of you hear and you see another one of these shutters kind of on the, again, the far side, but we'll call this one to the left and the last one to the right. That one opens up and you see light begin to shine in. And you also start hearing, well, a familiar sound uh, for some of you. Uh, you hear this like radio glitch coming from somewhere in the recesses of the hydroponics bay as Scooter plunges through the, the floor. That's when you, what we heard, right? When we were out, out there, right? One of Scooter's goddamn space turtles fucking trying to sneak up on us. <laughs> what? Did... Oh, damn it. He went through the... the he said it was Weebly Wobby and he stomped on it and now he's... Uh, that's one way to find your way around things, I suppose. He's very Scooter. direct. Scooter? I'm alive. And, he, and as you look up, Scooter, you can see that there are these very tight tunnels that seem to spread out in different directions underneath the hydroponics bay. Someone's digging tunnels under here. Like tight, like I could crawl through them. Like you could crawl through them. Yeah. Squat you could walk, walk through them, but you could, you could crawl through them. Yeah. Someone's digging tunnels down here. Someone's also Lots opening of, blinds up here though. It was a distraction. They make you look up so you won't think about down. Can I? I don't have Comtech, but can I try since I'm in the computer already to see like if the blinds are open from like a program or if it's like on a timer or like it's is not that... on a timer. Um, but no, there's a there's many there's like a there's probably a manual control uh, that has to be. Uh, that has to be switched, like an actual switch somewhere. Skeeter, you didn't open that, right? No, no, man. This is just like when our equipment was getting messed up out there, too. Um, same, um, same. Can you, like, so it, it is the height of this something where, like, I would need a hoist yeah, to try to, like, look it's out? in the back. Like, you guys are kind of still towards the front. Like, it's in the back. It's a very big building. And think of it like a, almost like a greenhouse extension. And so okay. that's back there. You guys like like you're looking over there and it's like there's all sorts of equipment and such in the way. Like you you, you don't even really have a good view of of that section of the building. Uh scooter, do you need um do you need a hand up cuz I kind of want to go look at that back there. Do, do you want us to pull you out before we uh wander off to the back? No, I'll meet you over there. Uh sure. And Michelle will kind of look back at Skeeter. Yeah, let's go find ourselves. The, yeah, whatever's making the sound. This is going to be okay. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, Michelle, Skeeter, you start moving to the back. Past some of the debris, some of the equipment, etc. that has, has yet to be unpacked or has yet to be rearranged. And on, we'll say, we'll call it the east and the west. East and West Wings. 
you get to the point where you can kind of see both of you notice that there is someone standing underneath the east wing and there's someone standing underneath the west wing and you notice that both figures are staring up and out through that windowed ceiling and as you get closer you realize they are both working joes and they're Heads are staring up at the sky through the skylight in the ceiling. As you get close, you can see their mouths, which are, you know, they're not, they're not, they don't really have them, but you can see that they kind of light up every now and then. And that's when you hear the sound of that glitch just kind of coming right directly out of it. Michelle's going to reach up and just try to close the blind on her side. Okay. Reach up. Pull the switch. And as you do, um, you hear the glitch stop. You see the working Joe's head comes down from where it was staring, turns, and starts walking directly at you. Uh, so, so Trey, you, what, Skeeter? Oh, I was just talking to it because it looked like it was coming right at you and I'm scared of shit. Hey yes. there, Joe, beautiful day. Are you talking to the one that's walking at Michelle or yes. the one on your side? No, the one walking stop. at her. It's continuing to walk at her. It's like maybe 10 steps away. It'll be like two seconds, three seconds before it gets there. Do you do anything else, Michelle? I'm going to attempt like a power down command or something. Like you've been reassigned report back to, uh, okay. R- roll command test. Okay. This is going to go freaking great. <laughs> hey, two successes. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> You see as it's going right at you, you say what you say, and then at the very last second, it just swerves around you and continues walking towards the front of the building. You hear as the door opens, and it seems to go outside. And Michelle just sort of points to the other one. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, gosh. And so Michelle will walk over and like close the blind on the other side. Okay. Um, you head over, close the blind. The same thing happens. The thing turns and starts walking in your direction. Repeat the exact same thing say, that I said. You multiple successes, so we don't need another roll. And so you do it again, and it walks directly at you and up until the last second, and then it swerves around and continues to walk towards the front of the building and out the front. Why this is all happening, I want to touch back with Chris and Jack, who are still inside, this building. You're still inside the ISC dorms. Chris, you notice on the ground, there is a small little sort of data, data stick. You didn't notice it before, uh, but this is, this was Jack's stress. He drops it. Maybe you noticed him drop it. Maybe you didn't. You open the door, but when you turn around, there is a data, there's a small, maybe about the size of a finger, a couple inches um, laying on the ground. And Jack, hand kind of trembling a little bit. Uh, she more or less ignores Jack and is like, oh, great. Uh, let's see what this is. And picks up the data stick and sticks it in the console. I need a contact from you then. As he as it was failed from Jack. Jack just kind of steps out of the way, still twitching a little bit. Zero mm-hmm. in contact. Amazing. <laughs> Push it. Yeah, can I take one audience size to reduce yep. the stress? And yeah, ex- I, I, I'm so into uh, Melissa's cheating, so I'm gonna. Oh yeah. Oh, I do noticed. <laughs> all of our games. Oh yeah, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> failed so many rolls. I really needed really to get really my really stress cheating. in order. Oh my goodness! Five oh, successes. Oh, oh. Okay, I'm just gonna give you everything then. Holy crap! Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you the whole thing. You Hell yes. You get inside here. You notice, first of all, 
that this seems to be it's very heavily encrypted. Uh, but somehow maybe you have experience with this, you bypass it, and you notice that it is detailed schematics of the Apollo mainframe room, the Apollo mainframe, detailed instructions on how to bypass security, detailed instructions on how to create a backdoor into Seekson's data storage, and all manner of like these different instructions on which files to get, what is of interest, that sort of thing. It definitely looks like these are instructions for a kind of corporate espionage. That's what this is. Holy shit, Jack boy. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> and uh, she hastily pulls out the idea stick like, we can't be looking at, the, at this on this computer. Oh. 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 Let's go. We need to go. He looks down at his hands and realizes they're empty. Uh, Let's well, go. Then. We need to go. And she like, shoves him. Oh, oh yes. Yes, I see. I see. As he's walking, he's like, I, I see your your assertion. Yes. If, if you're okay with it, I, I'd really like uh, Chris to like, take him by the hand and like march him like with purpose and alacrity. Yeah. Okay. As you, you get outside the pod, uh, let's see if there anyone there. You're once again very lucky as there's no one in the hallway. Whoever it was that came to find you have already left. You leave the living pod. And as you open the door to go outside, standing in the doorway is a working Joe. That's just right there kind of blocking your way. As if frozen. Around it. Okay. You squeeze around it as it's very big. And you kind of rub against it a little bit. Uh, as like, you know, an, an elbow or shoulder or whatever. And it just stays there as you walk past. And then eventually it reaches out and opens the door back up. And goes inside where you just left. We're gonna cut over to Scooter, who is crawling That's me. in the tunnels. That's you. Uh -huh. You're crawling in the tunnels. Yeah. I figured it would be you. I figured it would be you down here. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. You so you're kind of pushing through. You're feeling like it's extremely freezing. Like the rock down here is just so cold. Yeah. But you're pushing through and you're pushing through. And then eventually you kind of burst out into an opening uh, as you realize like you have you've made it through. I, you, you might have gone down a bit, too. You're not sure. Sure. Um, assuming you have probably light on you, no problem. But you see that you're in a kind of a rocky chamber, um, relatively flat flooring, but it's not perfect. Uh, but yeah. you can stand now. Uh, kind of hunched a little bit. And as you kind of scan around the room, you hear the sounds of of water, maybe? Okay. And when you scan, you're you're mostly seeing rock wall, rock wall, rock wall, and all of a sudden there's an opening. You continue to scan, and you see someone sitting on the ground on the ledge of this underground chamber their legs kind of over the side, staring off into darkness. And as you hold your light up in that direction, you can kind of see that they're looking out into what appears to be some kind of like underground river of some kind. And they're just yeah. sitting on the edge. What would you like to do? We, a person person or a working Joe person? I'll tell you that it definitely doesn't look like a working Joe because there's hair on the back. I'll go sit down next to him. As you sit down next to her, you realize that there is a significant amount of cold coming off of her. You get a couple steps closer, a couple steps closer. You look out at the river and you see these huge chunks of ice, these kind of like dirty looking mm -hmm. chunks of ice, like the size of a refrigerator just floating down below you. 
And as you sit down and you look over, you see that she is completely and utterly frozen through. And she's just staring directly out into the river. And that is where we're going to go ahead and end for tonight. And we'll pick up in a couple weeks on that particular moment. Okay. That's awesome. What the Uh, hell? I don't know. I'm just making it up as I go. (laughs) Sounds right. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. There we go. Amazing. All right. I know. (laughs) How is the time already? That's very true. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. I thought maybe we'd go out prospecting today i wasn't i didn't know how much you guys are going to lead into like the investigation or not so like i had some prospecting stuff ready to go we'll get there we'll get there (laughs) we won't we'll see no this is gonna turn into an investigation campaign somehow (laughs) they always do it's just like my default i'm sorry like it's all right it was fun because we were terrible we're We're dropping (laughs) down through roofs and digging and underground you professional investigator really would rather be doing anything else (laughs) (laughs) i gotta be the kool-aid man yeah (laughs) i gotta insult a lot of people i gotta start a big ass fire and i gotta go crawling through some tunnels absolutely chug had a very good day yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. This is only day two. It's only day two. We have a lot of days to go. A lot of days to go. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's do some clothes. And now we don't have again. anywhere to take a shower because it got burned <laughs> down. There Other was baths. more than one <laughs> bathroom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you just have to go into like the I- ICSC or the GES <laughs> ones. You don't want to go to the GES ones. That's just a bunch of like knuckle dragon, you know, laborers. It's kind of nasty in there. But like, I see. I see. It's probably not so bad. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's do some closing plugs and we'll get on out of here. Chuck, what is going on, That's man? Me. What are you up to? Uh, Defenders of Cobalt is where you can find me. On Wednesdays, we got our Night Below campaign using Dungeon Crawl Classics. On Fridays, Joe is making a game called Anvian. We're doing a play test campaign. Uh, so that's what I got going on. The Kickstarter funded. So, uh, you know, I just have to sit down and pretend to work on it. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that is freaking awesome. Very excited to get the uh, get the final final product. When it's ready to go, we should do another should do another one shot when sure. it's ready to come out. It'd be fun. Looking looking at October. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. It's like a Halloween something or other. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jeremy, you got a Patreon you would like to share with us. I do. That's true. It's Aaron Reese on Patreon. There's comics, maps, tokens. It's fun stuff. Check it out. Excellent. And uh, Maitre, uh, tell us where, where where everyone can find you and what else you do on the internet. Uh, mostly, I force my friendship on these lovely people. But uh, otherwise, on the internet, I have Mighty Plays Games on YouTube. And uh if you're into multi-system or system agnostic tabletop stuff, you should uh, check me out. Perfect. Perfect. Sorry about that. Uh, and then Adam, about Can yeah. Otter. Yeah, we just fulfilled our Kickstarter. So I guess I would say keep an eye on the YouTube channel. Um or hop into our uh, Discord. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, where you can get any news on um, the game that's uh, coming out, Teenage Odyssey, or um, any future stuff we have. Right now, we're really focused on delivering before we start talking about other projects. So um, just stay tuned. Fantastic. Uh, awesome. As for us, uh, normally we have a Tuesday night game, but we're down a player, so no, no tomorrow night. We'll do our Perils and Princesses next week. Uh, so no Tuesday night game. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday with more Simba Room. We'll be back on Friday with Warhammer 40K, Wrath and Glory. Uh, Saturday, we've got Call of Cthulhu, Eternal Lives, where we are, I mean, there's like a 90% chance we finish up Los Angeles with fewer uh, investigators than we started with. Uh, but there's wait, like a wait, 90% what? chance. What? what? Ah. No, no, worry. you guys are fine. You're at UCLA hanging out with Keanu Reeves and shit like that. It's it's Stephen Longer, <laughs> pretty, pretty screwed. 
Um, and then next Monday, we'll be doing Fragged as we alternate every Monday between Fragged and Alien. Uh, and uh, make sure you check out the YouTube page if you haven't already, Adventures in Lollygagging. We'd love if you threw a, subscri- if you threw a was it subscribe, like, stuff like that. Uh, we have all sorts of other games, uh, and you can come uh, come hang out with us on our own Discord as well. You can see a lot of these folks here. Uh, we're all kind of intermeshed on everyone's uh, various places, so you'll find us somewhere. Uh, we're going to go ahead and raid Dork Tales as they are playing, I think it's just D&D. So yeah, let's just go ahead and give them a raid. Have a great rest of your night. Have a great rest of your week. We'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.